Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GI Mom, joined as always by Jared Dad. Hi. How's it going, Jared Dad? Yeah, pretty good. Excellent, excellent. This is going to be a no rules podcast, but also our regular podcast for the week. So we're just going full on no rules this week. It's it's a double reverse no rules whammy. <laughs> Nobody's even going to know what to I don't do even know just... what just happened. Did we have a podcast even? I don't know. Who knows? Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> That's part of the excitement. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. excited. <laughs> uh, but it's no rules, so we can do whatever we want, and we're still going to do a cocktail of the week. Yep. Uh, the cocktail of the week, I, of course, don't remember the name of, so you just have a sip of it, and you tell me <laughs> so while I pull it up. It's like the Michael's Mule or Morrison Mule. The Morrison, Morrison Mule. Mule. Morrison Mule. Bourbon, Aperol, lime juice, ginger beer. It's kind of pinkish. That's, that's from the Aperol. It's real tasty. It like the Aperol just adds like a hint of bitter herbalness. Mm hmm. To but you can still taste the bourbon. Yeah, it's very bourbon forward. Fizzy. Yeah. Delish. I got to say, I'm I'm not as used to bourbon anymore because we, all we drink down here is rum. I love rum. Rum, rum, <laughs> rum, rum, rum. Well, it's right up my alley. It's just sweet. Yeah, it's good. Um, okay. Dog updates. Um, Boots had a seizure yesterday. Mm hmm. And then he was up being weird all night. <laughs> like weirder than normal. <laughs> I was going to say, he's up weird and stubborn. And you're just like, well, how much of that is a seizure? Eh, hard to tell. I, his seizures are so traumatic for me. Ugh. They make me so anxious for like days after. And I was so tired from the stupid jellyfish. I'm, I'm mostly better. Like the pain is gone, but I'm really exhausted. And I was like, I have to just sleep last night i was like i have to sleep and i laid in bed for like two hours trying to fall asleep all stressed out about foods and then i think at like 1 30 i finally drifted off i think i last looked at the clock at like 125 <laughs> when did you get up with him 150 oh my god <laughs> and then of course i'm up too because you're getting up and he and i got up because he was barking he was making sounds he just didn't want to get up he just wanted to bark and then he, a lot of it was walking in a circle. I mean, he was just clearly kind of distraught. He didn't feel yeah. good. And last time when he had the whole clusters of stuff back in September, he did this, like he had his seizures the first day and then overnight he was walking in circles and doing all of this stuff. But, you know, this time we have midazolam, which is a, uh, it's a benzodiazepine. You inject it like a liquid. <laughs> you just defined it with a longer word know. that nobody knows. Uh, they use it for anesthesia sometimes. <laughs> it uh, it kind of sh resets your brain is what the one of our vets said. Ooh, I said. should try it. No, don't do that. You we might need, like the we new... We need it for foods. The new Ingo. It's very short acting. Like it wears off in like less than a minute, I think. Um, but if they're having... Like it, when he had that cluster seizure before we kind of had multiple ones in a row they had given it to us and they're like if he has two give it to him after the second and it'll stop the clusters our neurologist has given us a bunch of doses and is like if he has a seizure give him this because we know he has these cluster seizures so it'll stop him from going into that so he had a seizure yesterday afternoon so we gave him that right away which worked and it was a pretty bad seizure but yeah. that worked and then we also have clorazepate for him, which I guess is the, it's a variation on clonazepam. It's another benzodiazepine. So it's the same kind of drug as what you, is what we shoot into his nose, but it's a pill. So like the nose stuff is like, get it in there right away. It immediately starts working. Yeah. And then the pills are to kind of have the same thing and it, it will prevent the seizures hopefully. And so we give it that three times a day. And then we increased one of his other drugs. He's on Keppra, which is a seizure drug. And it's like a time release, like extended release. So the vet's like cut it in half and give it to him because that breaks the extended release thing. And I was saying to GR dad, that's how, that's why people get, have problems with Oxycontin because the content in Oxycontin is continuous release. And so when you crush it, you get like a whole day's dose <laughs> You know, it's supposed to be slowly released all day. Right away. You get it right away. Um, and all you have to do is crush the pill for that. And so for this, it's she's like, cut it in half. That that gets rid of like, you know, the basically it dissolves from the inside, from the outside in. So it's released slowly. If you break it in half, it gets all at once. So he gets like this immediate dose, but it's a really safe drug. And so that's, you know, it's good that he gets it all at once. 
So he's on extra doses of that. So in addition to the normal 11 pills that he gets uh-huh. every morning and every night, <laughs> we're also giving him this other cocktail now. Yep. Extra dose of Keppra and then three extra benzodiazepines for the next few days. But so knock on wood. Right? I know. I mean, so far it's been it's been good. Uh, we I mean we thought yesterday he was going to have another one. We called the neurologist after the first one and then I thought overnight he was definitely going to have one, but he has made it so far. So hopefully that means, you know, this whole thing we're doing is working. Yeah, and he seems a little bit more himself. He said he ate and he, he's been goofing around and chomping. Yeah, he's still a little bit weird. He was like doing weird mouth things like kind of like he had a piece of food stuck in there, but he didn't, you know, just kind of this repetitive motion a couple of times. Mm. But he's, so far he seems OK. It's I I think it's more traumatic for me than for him when he has a seizure like it. It really causes me some serious problems. He He's not. I mean, we think we've talked about this. There, he may not. Re- he may not be sort of present during the seizure, right? So he kind of blacks out and then mm-hmm. comes back and is just like, oh, ha, 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 "Who are you?" <laughs> yeah, he's he's actually. I, yeah, so yesterday he had a seizure, <laughs> and then yeah, he comes out of it and he's like, he sniffs your face, he kind of gives you licks, and I was like, "Voods, how about we go outside?" And he's like, "Okay," and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go in my office and get something." He followed me in there, and I was like, "No, Voods, this way." He's like, "Oh, okay." It was like all the new <laughs> went out of him. Like the yeah. seizure shakes out all the new. <laughs> yeah, he was like obedient for 10 minutes. It was amazing. And, and just like happy. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to do this. That sounds great, Jen. Okay. Um, so anyway, so far he's doing fine. Uh, you know, I've got all kinds of existential dread about this. But, um, you know, he's he's okay. Um. What other dog news do we have this week? Um, Hops is doing well. She's swimming. She loves swimming. Has it only been a week since the last podcast? Because it seems yes. like four weeks. Since since the buoy and the murder attempt by the jellyfish. Yeah. Um, That's right. Yeah. No, she's been doing good. No problems. Um, everybody is actually doing fine. Remy's going in tomorrow to try to figure out the whole blood sugar thing. Yeah. His fur is getting softer. He really, he's getting so like much noticeably, better. noticeably, yeah. He has made a turn in the last couple of weeks in terms of just like settling in and like a lot of his anxiety has faded away. He's way more like snuggly and affectionate. He has really won me over in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and it's it's not just me. It's that he, he has really, he's kind of, he hit a tipping point mm-hmm. and has turned into a way calmer sweeter dog who's who i think has fallen in love with us which makes it way easier to fall in love with him back he's kind of, he's kind of finding his place right and he's much yeah. more comfortable and we're still going to be there tomorrow you know yeah. and, and and he knows he's tugged a few times with guac which is a pretty everything's a bit of an exercise in faith for him because he can't see so he has to kind of yeah. trust that it won't end badly i think i mean he just doesn't have the same he can't pick up on the same cues yeah but yeah, he and Guac actually have a really good time tugging now. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so who gets the low maintenance dog of the week award? Well, it's not Brody because he's been kind of kind of a pain in the ass, m- whiny, and, he, and he's wanted second and third and Ugh, infinite dinners, dinners yeah. like almost every night this last week. So he's dethroned. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe guac. I think two days ago you were like, "No dogs get it ever no, no, again." No, no, no. That was with that was with the jellyfish attack. <laughs> that was last week's episode yeah. where I declared nobody gets it anymore. I think guac. He's been. I mean, the the days since last escape attempt are more than ten now, and you know he he's been he's been quite quite good, and he always is pretty empathetic. Brody and just showed up and is trying to walk through the podcast equipment. So any chance you had is now gone. CB. Brody, you're gunning for dinner number three now. You may not remember, but no, you have no, to. No, no, don't come in here. No, no. Yeah. No. We're, we're giving away your award. It has your name no on it. No trophy three, for you. Has your name on it three times. It'll have Guac's name next. <laughs> no, Guac's been really good. He's, he's quite uh, sensitive, actually, to things and tries to do the right thing. Yeah. He, right. He's also a good driving buddy. I've been taking him into town a lot. He goes in the car every single day. <laughs> he does. He doesn't do much. He's not rip roaringly excited, but he's very content back there. Yeah. He's very content. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's a big fan. And, and Voods actually goes a lot of the time, too. And everyone who sees him hanging his head out the window thinks he's 
awesome. Mm-hmm. He he's, gets a lot of waves and smiles. He's part. No, I, I'll I'll take care of him. <laughs> we're 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 both trying to block Brody from getting in here, but I I got himself <laughs> blocked to your dad. Brody just has this quizzical look on his face, like. Do you guys know that your leg is stopping me from getting up on the couch? I do. Actually, yes, I do. Yeah, it's intentional. It's <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. I got to say, Ingo, I mean, I bought a second trophy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a first place trophy. It's like a little cup and it says first on it, like a one. And I thought it would be good for doing like dog achievements of the week. You know, like Vood's got a trophy once when he walked a mile for the first time. And... You know, like we could have given it to Hops, even when she wasn't low maintenance, like for her first swim, like achievement. Yeah. I would like to award the first place trophy to you this week. Me. Because today is like the first day I haven't had to lay on the couch all day because of this jellyfish thing. And you have done remarkable work, like taking care of all these dogs, like all of their feedings, all of their trips out, all of everything. I have literally like laid on the couch with my bedroom (laughs) pillows and like slept and watched Halloween Wars, like 5,000 episodes of Halloween Wars, and just not done anything. And you've taken care of everything. I was not prepared for this. I do not have a no. prepared speech. I should have like paper crinkling and been like, <laughs> actually, I'd like to thank the Academy and I'd like to thank. What a surprise. Well, I couldn't you. do it without my team. Thank you for taking care of me. I, and and all I, of us. But I also, I mean, I have to protest a little bit. I have not. You have been taking care of things, you've been doing a lot of stuff. You're making that up. I literally have laid on the couch. I've been healing my body. You've been feeling terrible half the day, but then sometimes you had these like bursts of energy and you'd be like, oh, picking up this room and this room and doing this. And you're like, oh, now I feel like crap. Yeah, clean the kitchen for 15 minutes and be like, oh, dear God, I need to sleep for eight hours. (laughs) It's been, I think you've been doing almost as much as usual and you're just acutely aware that it's like that 10% that you're not doing. I think you don't know how much I normally do then. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway it's fine yes. i'm i'm Thank happy you. to help and and it's nice to be able to help you um yeah all right in, that said in tangible ways i do have a bone to pick with you also what? on my list here whiplash uh golden ratio 12 month calendars are now available there's a link in our bio <laughs> link <laughs> this i'll accept <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of those calendars, dear dad? Well, I ordered two. <laughs> you bought two of them. <laughs> you don't ever have to buy our merch. <laughs> I mean, as I was ordering it, I was like, hey, hey, hey. I wonder if she figure out, find oh out, or God. if I have to tell her when they come. <laughs> I'll like send them to my parents. Or, or, but you I know, can just get them for you. Yeah. I, I was like, well, I'm supporting the golden ratio. And but I, I, like, I could just give the money. <laughs> it's it's our money. You worked. You explained to me that I'm really just paying the publisher mm-hmm. people somehow. But I think somehow you get some of the money. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know what? I just got to give up. Now your sales are inflated by two. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys want golden ratio calendars, just go to the link in our bio. Uh, we're not shipping them like out of the household. There's like, you know, we upload the pictures and everything and the publisher like handles shipping and returns and whatever. And they ship worldwide. So uh, if you want a calendar, you can. I mean, I got to say the amusement was work, wor- worth whatever worth Delta we bucks. get. I was. <laughs> I'm still very pleased with myself. I think the calendars are fifty for ordering two. Oh my god! Well, good. good They're great. They're very. I would hardly recommend them. I didn't know it was on the back. They there's a surprise picture on the back. Uh, They came. Was it today that they came? Yeah. Yesterday they look. They they look really good actually. Morning. Yeah. And all the dogs' birthdays are marked as like the special holidays in the calendar. Which is nice. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's see. Anything else we got to talk about? Okay. Let's go down to the, well, before Podcast we, recommendation. Yeah, well, we can start with, it's no rules. We can do anything. Yes, yes, yes. Podcast recommendation. So uh, there's a Wondery podcast called Over My Dead Body, which has a few seasons. I listened to the first season, which was pretty good. And I skipped the second season, maybe. Wondery is a podcast production company. Yeah, yeah. So Over My Dead Body is the name of the podcast. And the podcast this season is called Fox Lake. And Fox Lake is two towns over from Crystal Lake where I grew up. I totally know Fox Lake. I have been there. And it's about this cop in Fox Lake who is like out in the morning and he says he sees some people kind of hanging out at this abandoned cement 
plant yeah. and he's going to go in and talk to them. He doesn't need backup. And then he calls for backup. He says he's going into the woods like after the guys and they find his body. They hear a gunshot. The The backup shows up. They hear a gunshot and they find his body and he's been shot twice and he's dead. And and I remember, I mean, this story is, what was it, 2015? Yeah, ish, 2013? yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's relatively recent. It's not an old case. And uh, it's a batshit crazy story. Very, like, I remember following it at the time because it was just like such a huge thing. You know, there was this manhunt and the FBI and the ATF, yeah. like all these agencies came in to try to find the guys uh, who he was chasing, who shot him. And um, there's all kinds of crazy shit that comes out. It's, but it's a great crime procedural. It, it's amazing that it's a true story and it and it's being told this well, um, because it could be a novel because it just proceeds so well. It's got really good narration by this uh, detective who's trying to figure out what happened, and it's just it's it's really I I have no connection to it, but I but I I really like it. It's very interesting. I you can't wait till the next episode. And I got to say, I mean, the thing that I love most about it is that everybody in it talks like the people that i grew up with because it's two towns over from where i grew up so they all have the accent that i don't have anymore though i kind of put it on in the like when i'm talking to the dogs i'll be like oh my god hops <laughs> get over here hops like uh but i kind of play the accent that i that i lost when i went to college but all these people have it and yeah. it's like just such like this transportation back to my childhood here you know everybody they interview has this kind of array of accents like the the main detective who's in charge of it um has has much more of like a chicago accent i was gonna say he does sound more chicago but mm -hmm. it's but your accent your lake forest lake fox lake crystal lake woodstock accent is a little milder but it's distinctive too yeah it, it heads more wisconsin yeah um yeah but but to like hear the the people from fox lake that they interview i'm like who they it sounds exactly like like everybody I grew up around. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's it's really well done. And I I gotta say, I mean uh, the the detective he he says at one point I think they were getting it was early on in the investigation and the brother of the cop who died called him and is like I hope if you find the guys d that did this that you just take them out. And the detective's like, what the fuck, like we're professionals like what the fuck is wrong with you and i was like it is nice to hear a cop like say yeah. that and not pull some like i wish i just, just shot these bastards what, what did he how did you describe him i think he's out to lunch with himself I mean, that, that guy's out <laughs> to lunch with himself it's like that was, that's a great say anyway it's a very very good podcast and it's still like new episodes come out on monday so it's it's not like all just out there and ready um i mean there's what yeah. four or five episodes out so far mm -hmm. um it's just it's really great so podcast corner recommendation what's it called again over my dead body fox lake over so if you find over, body. over my dead body uh <laughs> it's like that you'll find the whole you know all three seasons in there but fox lake is the one that's happening now yeah um the other thing that wasn't on my list that we need to talk about is the rocks in the front yard the rocks yes because there <laughs> have been questions of course because why do you have the mountain of white pile. boulders in your front yard wait doesn't everybody <laughs> <laughs> it's a feature come on <laughs> it's interesting it's a feature <laughs> yeah, it's interesting the truck came and dumped a bunch of rocks literally that's what happened yeah we're having a seawall put in we've been talking about the seawall for two years because that's how long it has taken to get the permits slowed down by covid and and some personnel changes and something getting lost at the army corps of engineers but still uh it has been a, literally a two-year process to get this done um i mean we applied before covid like the engineers came out yeah um yeah so anyway it's it's finally happening yeah uh, apparently we'll see. <laughs> i mean it's happening enough that the the contractor who's <laughs> building it has brought not just the rocks but also the boom the the like floaty thing that's going to go in the water to keep debris from floating away that's theirs yeah right so that's at our house now yeah this is i have two thoughts <laughs> one is like this is like the windows that sat under our house oh, for true. a year before those were they our were windows installed. though it's his boom well, there are rocks <laughs> i know but the i'm saying the boom is theirs that's and they true. can't do other it's projects a big yellow floaty boom yeah but the other story is, 
for a while I can't, they brought that in from another job. Um, but, and for a while I'd go downstairs and I'd be like, oh, is there a dead thing somewhere? It smells like a dead thing. <laughs> this is, I have to check if it's behind the RV or whatever. It was the boom. It smelled like dead thing because it was still wet from the other job. Gross. Yeah. But like, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't us. It's the boom. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway they it should be very soon um they're finishing up at another house and it sounded like as they were finishing that one you know when they've got guys who have unused time over there they'll start bits over here but eventually i mean they're they're gonna show up with like a bunch of heavy equipment that's gonna move all those rocks into the backyard but we're gonna get a dock so the the slopey beach is gonna go away there's going to be a much higher wall there, which is great because when we get big tides, they come into the yard now. Uh, our our neighbors both have seawalls and they're like two feet higher than our shoreline. So ours is going to be up like that. They're going to fill it in. We're going to have a dock, but they're going to cut two sets of stairs into the rock on the seawall. So there'll be steps going in and there's going to be a ramp off the dock into the water for the dogs. Yep. So hopefully so. it'll be at, at least the same quality life for let's let's face it hops mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even better yeah and I'm very excited to teach Guac to dock dive his <laughs> name is Guaco Man dive off the Daco Man oh that's so good he's gonna so he's good. gonna be so good at it no that's really good um he's gonna be a natural if you throw a ball oh, he will launch 100%. he will launch yep the goal would be to get uh, Remy to do it. Remy is turning into a little Guac. He's almost like a mini me of guac in some in so many ways. I think it, once Remy can see, he'll totally do it. Yeah, yeah. He already just jumps off the bed. <laughs> when when Remy gets on the <laughs> bed, he knows it's too high for him to just like jump down or reach his paws down. So he just kind of anxiously waits, and then one of us is like, "Okay, we'll help," and we'll kind of slide an arm under his chest, and then he just does a leap. He like, just like <laughs> extends both feet forward uh, like, like Superman, yeah. and kind of <laughs> Into the air. he launches himself, just launches a, up like yeah. a faith jump. Like we have to kind of catch him in midair. He's a, it's a, it's startling every time, and we know it's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> we we have a we. <laughs> Where like hops would like ease down, you know, and yeah. like slide down and do the smart thing. He's like we. <laughs> Vink does that too, though. I mean, Vink can get off the bed, but she. I'm like Vink. I'm gonna meow you. Yeah. She jumps, and I go meow, and I like <laughs> lift her up and put her in her bed, and she kind of does a little leap when I do that too. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. On my list of things for us to talk about, um, should we do the guac dick pics? Sure. <laughs> We've been alluding it's to It's an old month. story, yeah. So shortly after we got guac, which was early in lockdown, I mean, we got him before everything locked down, but very, you know, two weeks before COVID lockdown started, um, there was a woman who saw the pictures of guac and was like, that's my dog. You know, my dog was stolen from my yard in Texas. That's my dog. And I was like, well, this, like, we know the background of this dog. And it was not stolen from anybody's yard in Texas. Um, it was, like, given up by the owner, maybe, in, but definitely in Virginia. But the guy may have been from North Carolina. Yeah. So he, he definitely came into a shelter in Virginia. And it he came in with another dog. And someone's like, I know who this guy is. You know, this this is the story that happened you know, from North Carolina. So I, I guess it could be wrong, right? It could be. Not it, as wrong as she thinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this was just like, this wasn't the rescue, right? The rescue is like, he came into a shelter. We don't have any background. Um, There's more background. Here. That's it. And then, so, yeah. So like the foster knew someone who's like, oh, I think that's my ex-husband, his dog's maybe or like the friend's ex-husband so it's, you know it was a sort of second third hand story so it could be wrong maybe somebody did steal this dog from texas bring it to virginia drop it at a shelter and then what and so and i'm like i i don't think that's the case and she's like that's my ginger i would recognize <laughs> ginger anywhere you mean you would recognize her anywhere so it turns out Ginger is a she, and I was like, well, this is definitely not your dog. <laughs> I mean, uh, we don't have to speculate anymore about what happened to This Kwok. is a male dog. And she's like, 
it's not you're lying i mean she went nuts she called the rescue group she was harassing me in dm she found my emails like harassing me and i'm like lady this is not your this is a boy dog and she's like it's not this is my dog it was stolen how'd you get my dog so i literally was like flip guac over on his back took a picture of his penis <laughs> it, face in the picture and then just penis sent it to her i was like this is my dog. <laughs> this is guac's penis it's not ginger <laughs> unsolicited dick pics no solicited sort I mean, of it, uh, required it, i don't Justified. know what other evidence i can give that's I what have it is incontrovertible proof that this is not your female dog ginger right and uh, here here is the proof and i don't so. think she completely went away after that right? i had to block her yeah, yeah. which uh, is which is just now shows she, how nutty the whole thing is yeah she was she was not real stable i mean i can see absolutely being heartbroken that your dog was stolen and seeing a picture and look there's plenty of dogs that we see where you know even we go like oh is that like remy in the right light looks a lot like Quark. for sure right yeah. there's plenty of dogs that you can see online and be like that is my dog i mean i see like when i see pictures of shadow sometimes yeah um totally shadow the golden i'll be like oh it's a picture of hops and then like i really have to go back and look and be like oh it's not no. or you know or sometimes he looks like Vink because they're related squishy face yeah squishy face picture of Vink sometimes looks like hop there's yeah. pictures of hops and Vink where i have to pay really close attention to yep. tell the difference yep totally um so i can see absolutely how someone could be like that 100 percent is my dog especially with the field goldens like that i mean we've had a bunch of dogs that look a lot like guac yeah and uh goofy but man he he's got the junk he's that her the, dog didn't have he's got the junk. That, that is a real that makes it a lot easier then we don't have to argue about how he got to north carolina or whatever yeah. <laughs> So anyway, that's that's the story of when I sent unsolicited <laughs> guac dick pics to a lady on the internet. Um, I just think it'd be funny to do that as like a response to unsolicited like human dick pics. <laughs> like really? Someone sends you a dick pic from a human and you just send them back a picture of guac's junk. <laughs> <laughs> like, ha! <laughs> you seem to enjoy this, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That'd be something. Yeah. Um... Let's see. Other things I have on the no rules list here. We got a lot of Halloween stuff. I, I'll i save some of that. We can talk about it later. But I do have, sure. a, cu I do have a couple spooky stories uh, from the household to share um, about ghosts. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, I was laying in bed. And from where I lie in bed, I kind of look out of the bedroom into like the main room here. And then I can see into kind of the space that's my office there's it's like a little guest suite there's like a bathroom in my office there's like a little alcove outside it's it? where remy mm -hmm. eats so mm -hmm. remy eats in there that's and right. I, I can see directly into there from where i lay in bed and at some point i i like kind of sat up in bed and i looked over there and i very clearly saw like a black figure standing in that doorway that faded away and it probably is because I was looking at my phone and then I looked up and my eyes were kind of screwed up. And, uh, hey, dear dad, are you looking at TikTok? No. My notes. Oh, you have no rules? Podcast notes? Dude, you think I'm so goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Wow. But go ahead. Uh, and I turned to Ingo <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I just saw this like black figure standing in the doorway over there but then it faded away it probably was just because i was looking at my phone and you were mostly asleep and i was like i guess it could be a ghost except like probably not like this you know we know the people who lived in this house like i mean it's it's only been one couple like the guy died but like why would he be here and ingo said well ghosts can commute <laughs> Like there could be a ghost who just died someplace else and decided yeah come here this this was his spot yeah yeah <laughs> you can commute we don't even have like the the trope of like the native american burial ground because the keys were unoccupied like there were there were some native american tribes who would come and like fish down here but none of the because there's no fresh water none of the islands were occupied koa so there were yeah. a lot of dead people on the keys yeah there, there would be like bodies left on Key West, yeah, but not really here. I don't know, pirates, pirate ghost, rum runners. There's a lot pirate of ghost in our house. Dead people in the Keys. Interesting. Uh, it's so been that's a while. that's ghost number one. I just like the idea that ghosts commute. <laughs> <laughs> the second one isn't really a ghost story, except uh, 
at some point it's the middle of the night and and I don't know if Voods had made a noise, which he does a lot in the middle of the night. God. But there was something that needed attention and you were like, I'll you know, I'll get up and take care of it and I was like, I'll, you know, I'll get up. It was definitely Voods. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Voods. He, he gets us up in the middle of the night oh. most nights, I would say. Uh, and so we kind of take turns, like whichever one of us wakes up, goes and takes care of it. Uh, and so I think you were like, I'll go take care of it. And I reached over and I put my hand on you and I was like, no, like, don't worry about it. Like, I'll, I'll get up. Like, I feel okay. And I open my eyes and you're gone. You're not in the bed. My hand is on somebody though it turns out it's guac <laughs> guac just took your spot so i reach guac over and, always takes my and, spot and i'm like rubbing what i thought was jared dad's back and i'm like don't worry like you can stay in bed i'll get up <laughs> and this is guac <laughs> and he's like oh that was really nice Jen. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god so those are our two ghosts i say the the night interruptions i the last time i felt like this has been when my daughter was like one and a half and two and wasn't sleeping at all yeah and just like every night you wake up and I wake up and I I want to respond before Voods usually wakes you up. Because he so gets going. So it has going. this weird urgency, right? Yeah. He has a, he has a yeah, he'll have like a, a, a couple of whines and then he starts barking, mm -hmm. which then will wake you up. And then it's like, you know, useless. You have a harder time falling back asleep than me, so... You know, so I sometimes let him out on the porch. Sometimes I sleep on the couch while he's out on the porch. I mean, it's just a very, it's a mess. It's a mess out here. You don't <laughs> want to know what goes on. No, anyway. I don't think I do. But it's all, especially with foods. I mean, if you have to bring him out, you get kind of fully awake, mostly fully awake. It's yeah. hard to sleep while carrying him down the stairs or up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I use the elevator. I still like carrying him around. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, feel like I'm the boss if I carry him. <laughs> So what do you have on your No Rules podcast notes? Um, I didn't even know you kept notes for this. Dude, I got lots of secrets. Not not no really. No kidding. Not really. I'm not that organized. Um, no, that, you know, that was a big one. I don't know. I can't find these notes. These are hmm. mostly dad jokes, it turns out. Oh, <laughs> that's all pretty good. Oh, speaking of dad jokes. Uh, so, dear dad good job on the halloween near cameo so the little video story that we posted on halloween uh that is basically <laughs> what we make for cameos yeah it's about that quality <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's similar to some of the halloween cameos that you made uh so if you liked the halloween story and you want a birthday version of that i mean spooky or not just let us know that's <laughs> that's what the cameos look like yeah uh and that's that's jr dad's cameo voice yeah, it's not as chipper as yours sometimes. You have a very upbeat, nice, genuine voice, and mine's like, eh, kind of gets kind of sarcastic in the middle parts. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop myself. Uh, there, It's great. Everybody loves your cameos. You have a lot of five-star ratings on Cameo. Right? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody. Yes, thanks for pointing pointing out that I was <laughs> upset about getting them. Oh, I had like a, a taste of the key story, but you know, since it's no rules, we'll do it anyway. The College of the Florida Keys is here, right? Yeah. In the Keys. And they offer an underwater pumpkin carving certificate. <laughs> I had this for, on my list too. For Halloween. <laughs> they had a picture of like the so, three people who got underwater pumpkin carving so certificates. So you're scuba certified, but then you also can go under there and carve a pumpkin while you're in your scuba suit underwater, which I think is hilarious. It's That's so, so good. Florida Keys. That's yeah. great. So good for them <laughs> for doing that. I think you can get like a... Above water and below water pumpkin carving certificate. That's so funny. I totally would have done that. Oh, n excellent. That's a great reason to get a scuba certificate. Yeah. <laughs> certificate. I want to carve pumpkins. Uh, I have a note here. So the Curse of Oak Island oh, yeah. is coming back <laughs> on for whatever season 18. So if you have not had the pleasure or... Don't. <laughs> so the Curse of Oak Island it's on the History Don't. Channel. Don't. The original premise was so good, which I is... I think we've talked about it before, even when there was still some hope. Yeah. There's no hope. Island in Canada that allegedly has buried treasure on it, and the people who have looked for the treasure in the past have all had tragedies befall them, and so this pair of brothers, one of whom has always been fascinated by it, and the other whom is like a drilling 
magnate and has a ton of money like they're gonna drill dig for the treasure and it was like as a one season pr- show was a great premise even two seasons but they're like on the 18th season they haven't found a goddamn thing except like a button <laughs> whatever it just there's never anything they have basically bought this whole island and just dug the whole thing into it's, it's kind of offensive because it's this rich guy mm-hmm. who's made his money somehow i think oil drilling there you go. He, he's yeah. in, in, I guess that's why his connections to these hover machinery people too. And then his ne'er do well brother, who is a postal carrier, who's the one who has all these dreams about the island. Yeah, he's like, yeah. and the problem is there's not a specific thing that they're trying to find. They'll find like a button or a bone or a piece of p- petrified paper was one. And then they'll try it. Then they'll be like, could this be the Ark of the Covenant? The Knights could, Templar? Is this a Bible from the 12th century? Ancient Mayan civilization? I swear to God, you're these not exaggerating. Yeah. Like, they have no idea what they're looking for. They're just digging up this island inch by inch by inch. And it's a small island. I think you can walk yeah. around it in an hour. Yeah. And they're spending millions of dollars on like 63 echolocation wells and literally test, yes that t- test explosions and they've dried out like one of the marshes because mm-hmm. they've put a seawall and they're digging with these big giant cranes they found nothing <laughs> nothing they find like one metal button and they're like this shows british troops were here well it's canadian it's a canadian island and they're like yeah. does this mean that the the British royal treasure was moved here in the 1700s. No, no, nobody said anything. Literally, the Holy Grail it's has been ab- brought up. Absurd. The Holy Grail. That's right. They're like, it's a metal cup. Is this like the Holy Grail? That's also it could here? be the Holy Grail. It is. It was. It. I used to hate watch it, and it like after three seasons, I realized it is nothing. Nothing is ever going to be found here. No. So after a couple of drinks, we were out to dinner and after a couple of drinks, we were, I think I had, I had gone, we generally don't do phones when we're out to dinner, but I was trying to look something up and like an ad for the new season of Ugh. Oak Island, like showed up in whatever I was looking for. Which and is I was like, like 18 now or something. It's a yeah, lot of it's seasons. A lot. And I was like, Hey, Ingo, there's a new season of Oak <laughs> Island. And slightly tipsy Ingo said, it's like The Bachelor, but with all ugly people and no one finds love. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wrote that down without context. And like a week later, I came back and I just said, like The Bachelor, but with all ugly people and no one finds love. I was like, what the hell was that about? And you remember, like, oh, you're like, Oak, Oak Island. Island. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's terrible. It's that awful. It, you, it's, it'll suck you in for a while. But then I think, I mean, I started hating myself for, for spending any time with it because it is, it is such a seductive format. And they mm-hmm. always promise just around the next corner, just one more well, just one more this. They find nothing. 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 They've never found a damn thing. They're, in, they're supposed to be all these treasures on this island, vaguely. So oh, it's, uh, fr- it's so frustrating. So for our, for our wedding anniversaries, we like to give each other, you know, there's like the, like this last one, was it the copper our seventh anniversary, I think, is copper, right? So we got yeah. each other copper. So there's always like a whatever, like it's the paper, or copper the iron, and or, or paper and leather. Yeah. yeah. So we always get each other presents in the theme, and there's a wood anniversary, and so <laughs> one of the things that they do, like the narrator for this show, is great. Oh, I mean, the no, poor guy. He's terrible. He, no, no, he's... no. I mean, he does a good job. The material he's given is not great. Does right. he do a great job? <laughs> but he's Could given, this be a great job? <laughs> he doesn't write that. He's given all like hypothetical questions. So it's like all rhetorical the questions. The brothers, like the you know, after digging, they they've come come upon like wood in the money pit. Wood? Like <laughs> wood underground <laughs> on an island in Oak literally called Oak Island. Does this Canada? mean the Spanish Armada was here with the treasure of the conquistadors? But he <laughs> like, literally goes wood <laughs> and that's like, every episode a lot. wood because they've dug up like <laughs> twenty one thousand pounds of mud from 100 feet down and then they they sift There's through it with a freaking tiny little filter <laughs> and you know and and, and pin- pincers and then they go there's a piece of wood and then they, go, they the all jump goes, around. They're like, oh, we found wood. And the guy goes, wood? An Oak Island? <laughs> so for our, for whatever the anniversary is, uh, that's wood. GR Dad got me a, a, metal. <laughs> a, a bottle opener that's like leather and metal 
Curse of Oak Island <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> and I was like, oh, because the guy goes, wood? <laughs> All the time. Yeah, like it found, counts as wood. They found wood underground. Oh, that's so funny. That was the most exciting thing they found so far is wood. Mm-hmm. Like some beams underground. Wood. Yeah. It's like old wood. And like literally. It's an old island. D- it's an old island and it's documented that dudes have come there before looking for the treasure and built structures underground to try to find it that collapsed in. So like maybe it's their fucking wood it's that you know that they put wood. there. Half the stuff they find is from those other treasure hunters that were like 80 years ago <sighs> that right. didn't find anything either. <laughs> we got to stop talking about it's this. It's a we're rant. It's now a rant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what else do I have <laughs> on here? Uh, that's pretty much it. I got a few Halloween things, but they're they don't feel top. Oh, I had anymore. something. What the, I I was just going to talk about how I uh I can't remember what the context was, but like at some point I came in in the evening and I can't remember what the problem of the day was. Um, but I came in and I was like, oh, I lost my wedding ring by the way because yeah, I was doing sure did. this outside. You take put it in your pocket, and then I think the same pocket as your phone. Yeah, and then he took out my phone, and it fell the out. Ring fell out. Yeah. So I used your metal detector. Jared Dad got me a metal detector, <laughs> which is like so geeky, and I also love it so much. And I have found like twenty-seven cents buried <laughs> under our driveway, <laughs> more than they have found on Oak Island. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I was like, all right, can I use the metal detector? Because I think I know where where I might have done it. Um. And then I actually found it without the thing, but I found it. So they, you know, there's, we have half an acre of land. Yeah. And it could have been anywhere and I found it. So it's a good sign. I think we should stay married. I I think it's a great sign though. I will add after that, I was in the bathroom and I washed my hands and I dried my hands off on a towel and I heard a little tink on the floor and I thought maybe there was like a pebble or something that had gotten stuck on the towel because dogs are covered in rocks all the time. (laughs) And then I sat down on the couch and my ring snagged on a blanket and I realized that my engagement ring was empty and what I had heard fall on the ground in the bathroom was actually the diamond from my engagement ring, which fortunately I was also able to find. I don't think it goes tink. I think it goes boom. <laughs> Clonk. Because, you know, it's four tons. Huge. <laughs> it's four massive. tons. Massive. It's as big as those rocks outside. <laughs> <laughs> it has fallen out once before. Because it's so heavy. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, that's got to be what it is. I mean, like five or six years ago and it fell out when I was on campus and I did not realize it had fallen out until Oof. I was like at the vet's That's office. That's so stressful. And I sent an email and as big as this diamond is. I mean, it's giant. Uh, it's, it's it looks too big very for any ring to hold on it. the floor. <laughs> and so I sent an email to my lab and there had been like a group meeting in the lab. And I'm like, you guys, I know. I, I don't even know where it fell out. But if anybody sees something sparkly laying on the ground, please look. And like the admin for our lab got in that to that room, which I didn't even know if that's where it fell out, right? On her hands and knees with a light and crawled around and found. See, I heard she tripped over it and like smashed her <laughs> knee, smashed her knee on it, and said, "What the heck is this thing?" <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a, a such a generous thing for her to do to crawl around that's on the floor, very nice, yeah. trying to find. I and mean, she even found it. Even a huge diamond looks really small on the floor. This when it's is like, so big. It's so big. Are you done? <laughs> you, you've made the joke like five times and you're now officially ruining my story. I, I don't think you're... Thinks you, oh, never mind. Go ahead. I want Care- you to get it fully out of your system so we're done. I'm finished with it. Okay. It was very nice of her. It was very nice of her. I mean, it's especially like not even knowing, it, knowing if it was there and... Diamonds of any size look really small when they're just like on the floor next to shards of paper and, you know, people's pencil bits and whatever other detritus gets tracked For in. our house, it'd be dust bunnies. Dust bunnies. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So she found it for me and I had it reset. I mean, that was like six years ago, but apparently I snagged a prong. So right now I'm wearing a different... Actually, I'm wearing this Tiffany diamond ring that I bought myself. When Jared Dad and I had been dating for a couple of years after you had turned down my wedding proposal and uh, before you had even given a sign that you were interested in getting married to me. And I was like, well, this guy's not getting me any diamond stuff. I'm going to buy myself this beautiful ring from Tiffany, which I did. It is it is quite fantastic. You got to say it's, it's very nice. It's, it's much smaller than the one I gave you. It's though. stunningly beautiful that I bought for myself. I'd say it's about the same size as the one I just, your dad I just want to say it's very 
interesting that you lose your wedding ring during Fantasy Fest in Key West <laughs> and then start wearing your, you know, independence ring. <laughs> that, I mean, it's basically like I'm buying myself. Also during Fantasy Fest in ring. Key West. Uh, I am so sad. Miss Squishy or whatever her name was. The, the like, latex woman. What was that? A rubber doll. <laughs> yeah, sorry, rubber oh doll. Oh, my God. Uh, so oh, we got a few things to talk about. So uh, the only other Halloween that I have missed in my life was in first grade when I had the chicken pox. I couldn't go trick or treating. I couldn't do anything for Halloween because I had chicken pox. And then this year I was so excited for fantasy fest. It was canceled last year. Going to go do it. Like all we were going to go to these dance parties. We had costumes, all this stuff. And I just like, couldn't even, I, I was like, maybe we'll go to the pub crawl on saturday just like for an hour so we can put our costumes on and walk around and i couldn't even get off the couch and it's good that we didn't didn't we go out to dinner was it la- two nights ago when you were just beat afterwards mm-hmm. you were just that was last night you were just beat still last night yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's good that you didn't we didn't push it no i mean so we missed everything <laughs> like we are uh, the 80s dance party the love to glow didn't get to go to anything yeah so i guess we got costumes for next year but um I, so i was when i was reading the descriptions of all of the parties a couple of weeks ago on the podcast there was the <laughs> kinky couples party hosted by love to Glo- uh hosted by rubber doll which we probably wouldn't have gone to we anyway absolutely would not have <laughs> gone to just, but there was no description but just so everyone understands this is not something we would have attended <laughs> <laughs> but the like you know i read all of the stuff like you know for this, for Shocktoberfest, right? It's like yeah. zombies will party. There will be hula hoops and body paint and, and fire eaters. And a goat. Yeah. Yeah. And all this stuff. And the kinky couples party with Rubber Doll was just. That was it. It was like Friday, <laughs> 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other details. So at some point I found the secret link to. It wasn't that secret, but I found the link to the details. And it's basically just an orgy. It's two nights. Couple <sighs> couples only, except single women also can get in for cheap. So maybe not just couples only, but like three hundred bucks. There's a closed check, mm-hmm. private rooms, lockers, re-entry permitted, so you can leave. <laughs> I didn't figure this one out. You had to explain that, that to me. The significance of re-entry permitted. I was you like, leave maybe you have to go to the bathroom people. or something. No, no, no. <laughs> no. If you don't want to have sex in the private spaces oh, or the Jesus. public spaces. Uh, you can leave with your people and come back. And I, uh, mom, if you're listening, like you got to skip ahead like five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do anything, but you're not going to like this part. We wouldn't so, have gone. So I was, ex- no, God, no. I mean, Nini. all power to people who are having a good time at this party. Like gr- no problem with that. Not my scene. But so I was at some point, you know, I had said to people on the podcast, like if you Google fantasy fest do google image search with safe search off you'll find that there are people who get body painted and they don't use the thong rule they don't comply and there's plenty of women who have this and they have like little shorts body painted on and there's you know appropriate creasing in the shorts that you can't really see their bits but they're clearly not wearing anything but there's dudes who also do not adhere to the thong rule and i was dming with someone and I wanted to send them a picture of a dude not adhering to the thong rule with the body paint. And so I Googled like Fantasy Fest Key West penis, which I mean, I, I of all people as a, with a PhD in the internet should know was a mistake. Should know better. Dear Lord, was there more there than I expected? Because what I was expecting was like some old dudes with their junk body painted that I was going to, you know, like like there's an elephant on their hips and they made their penis into the nose of the elephant. No, it was like full on orgy photos, like, <laughs> like oral sex in bars, like full you guys can go search for yourself if you want to see it like it was it was like porn hub just showed up there in still on my google image search i i was not expecting i was not <laughs> expecting it and but there were a lot of pictures that like we can recognize the bars that these were in Right. Because these bars just operate as normal bars most of the time. And I feel like I know exactly where that is, that that woman has like pulled aside the dude's like, uh, it's not even a kill, little flap in front of his junk. Tarzan And is thing. like Loin going cloth. down Loin in cloth. Fr- on him in the bar. Yeah. Uh, 
and and then there were pictures for some of these like like the pool parties with like the dj on stage in the middle of the pool and just like all of these naked people doing their thing so anyway the kinky couples party with rubber doll rubber doll i thought was a dude gr dad thought was a woman turns out is a woman latex artist she has an instagram page that you can go find she hosts the party (laughs) and it's it's just an orgy in the bar slash club and private rooms public rooms close check and you can leave and go do your stuff and then come back later if you want to (laughs) so it was yeah it's a whole it's a thing it's sobering to read that actually that description (laughs) yeah uh i just wanted to like see the parade which they didn't even have (laughs) this year so (laughs) next year we'll go to the parade and I, i gotta say like from that very startling google image search i have learned some places that we should avoid some parties that we should avoid because like the 80s party at irish kevin's i think is just dancing at the 80s party at irish kevin's but some of the other parties on that list i could clearly identify the places like there was Uh, a plaid party there were a lot of plaid people having oral sex in a bar the plaid didn't cover a lot the plaid was very small and was pushed aside in favor of sexual activities and that's just not a scene that i i care to get in on good for all of you guys have a good time but I learned it was informative to learn like what scenes I want to have a you know dance around in, and then what scenes I don't want to be part of. It's good. Yeah, it's good. But yeah. like more power to all these people. I hope they all had a great time and were safe. And yeah, we don't mean enjoy to themselves. shame anyone. It's just a mismatch. Just, just not our thing. Not our right, style. right, yeah. right. Uh, if it is your style, Fantasy Fest is the week before Halloween, and you can come down. Make your reservations now. No. It's going to be a parade next year, and there's body painters all over the island who will hook you up, thong or not. Yeah, don't wait. Don't wait too long because, like, next week is the beginning of powerboat racing weekend, Ugh. which is a whole polar opposite experience. I am sure. What was that Netflix show? The Cocaine Cowboys. Show? Cocaine, is it Cocaine Cowboys. Cowboys? Yeah, is yeah, that yeah. The show? So great show on netflix yes very like two episodes or something it's two or three uh, two it's or three short. Yeah, it's short uh, not th- like i don't normally watch that kind of true crime thing and i think it was like you know a, a weekend and i was doing stuff around the and house in and the southern florida you know key you know keys element is it was interesting already so yeah i was just kind of like hanging around and like i'll, I'll put this on as sort of background <laughs> tv uh oh it's miami it's it's got miami in the name is it Co- i thought it was cocaine it cowboys, cowboys yeah I'll, I'll pull it up while i mean there talking. may be you know a, a a sub subtitle um but anyway it's about like cocaine in miami in the 80s but they there's a point where like the the cocaine dealers that they're following are in the powerboat races in key west and they've got all this footage like old school footage from down here yeah uh so if you want i mean yeah, cocaine. You're right. It's just called Cocaine Cowboys. The Kings of Miami. That's the subtitle. Huh. Uh, and the actual, the cover picture of it that they show when I look at it is them at the powerboat races in Key West. Yeah, so, it was a big thing for them. I think that was one of the earlier activities. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a great show. Um, the people in it are super charming. Yes, very uh, interesting. Yeah, very charismatic and just a lot of big characters in it. Um, yeah all all kinds of crazy stuff so it's it's really worth watching and you can get a little glimpse of the powerboat races which are exactly the same now from what we can tell as they were in the 80s maybe a little less cocaine but who knows who, who knows who knows there are bricks of cocaine that still wash up this stuff is happening i was talking to the the guy who like does yard work across the street for our neighbors yeah like he's an old conk he's been down here forever and uh and I was, and he's quite a talker. Like every, every time I catch him. Oh, he's him, got stories about everything. And he likes to t- to talk about them. Like yeah. if I'm going out for a run and he catches <laughs> me like half an hour later, I'm still talking yeah. to him. <laughs> um, but he was talking about how, you know, like there were all of these construction companies like in the 80s in the Keys who were just running cocaine. And they kind of had these construction companies as fronts. So they'd like build really slow like a house here or there but they would use the property where they're building the houses as a place to bring the cocaine in so like the boats would like come up to oh they could use that these properties i was thinking they launder the money but that this is even more tangible (laughs) i I think some of both right that there's some money laundering but also that like then they'd have these properties on the water and you know people are just coming up and (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, and they're working on these houses. And then he said, you know, after they cracked down on a lot of that in the 80s, which is where the Conk Republic, you know, our, our sese- the secession of the keys from the U.S. into the Conk Republic, like that was all in response to the um, the crackdown, both from the Mariel Boatlift, which was also in the 80s, all the Cuban immigrants, um, as well as the cocaine trade, right? There's a, they put a border crossing <laughs> between the Keys and Florida. So <laughs> all of all of that kind of stuff stopped, it cut way back on the cocaine that was coming in from the Keys. Um, and he said a lot of those construction companies kind of started doing some construction, but nobody knew what they were doing. <laughs> and so he's like, he's like, I got my house like this. And there's like, you know, these four inch gaps between <laughs> beams that are supposed to be connected because he just like didn't know what the but hell. There's a heck doing. of a lot of cocaine in there. <laughs> yeah, Still. He's like, they were all probably like high as kites as they were oh, trying to geez. build the house. Uh, he's a funny guy. There's a lot of history here that we don't talk about. Yeah. I mean, we're learning it though. It's very interesting. Like how, how how much easier it is at least for me here to kind of connect into like all of these roots and things that have happened in the place where like i haven't really been able to do that in other places i mean dc is like so big it's hard to do that yeah and no one's from there right there are people who've been here for generation yeah so th- then in dc everyone's like well I, I moved here from you know somewhere yeah but even like the little town i grew up in is it just, i think it was just boring not a goddamn Maybe. thing ever happened Yeah, they happened don't have there. the cocaine empire stories. or the, you No, know. it's like they're a bunch of farmers and then... They don't have a fantasy somebody fest. Somebody built a subdivision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. You got anything else we need to put in this No Rules podcast? Nothing we need to talk about. No, I've had a few rants about things, but I'll just tease it. You know, talk about smoke detectors and password security and car alarms. I'm just... Uh, you know, for another time, for another time. <laughs> the Jer Dad. I got thoughts. <laughs> dad Rant podcast. <laughs> yeah, I can't put that on the OnlyFans because people won't pay for Dad Rant. Hundred percent, they would. And go <sighs> every single thing you talk about, people are like I would pay to hear and go talk about that. Your OnlyFans, you could, weather the weather report. You That's could so be funny. one of those OnlyFans hits oh supporting your spouse. Oh Normally, it's the woman supporting the deadbeat guy, but you could be the OnlyFans hero supporting me if you just. S- just show a little pride. skin you don't even need to show skin <laughs> fold laundry fully dressed and bitch about smoke alarms <laughs> and people will pay you a monthly subscription fee i know and i'd feel guilty about it, taking people's money for that. Uh, that there's the problem there's the problem i'm not an influencer <laughs> i mean clearly you are uh you're just ignoring I, I it i can't take money for that bullshit <laughs> i i will let people know um there is a thing called super follow if you follow pavlov and maslow they have a super follower thing and it's, it's kind of like patreon hmm. or only fans but wholesome um where you get bonus content like you pay a monthly fee to get just it's basically just like patreon but administered through twitter um they were pay, Pavlov and Maslow were selected as like part of the test group of people doing super follows. So they have it now. Um, We've applied for it, but they haven't rolled it out broadly yet. So we don't have it. But when we, when they do make it available to everyone, uh, Jared and I have a whole list of kind of brainstormed content. We're going to have Jared jokes of the week. We're going to have all, all kinds of stuff. So we will have super follows eventually, which will take the place of, the much alluded to Jared Dad only fans. It just doesn't have the the connotation. <laughs> I know. I mean you fans. got you're you're really imparting a lot of shame around OnlyFans. No, for me, I don't think I can live up to having my own channel. Oh, interesting. I'm a sidekick. I'm not a main man. I'm <laughs> I not mean, a leading man. I'm I a would sidekick. argue that most of the friends of the squad see you as as the leading man then they're wrong <laughs> it's your baby i'm just contributing as much as i can you're doing a great job as much as i can all right well i think that is enough rambling <sighs> it's never enough I mean, Jen, wanna, it's never enough you want to bitch about car alarms no not today <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling actually not bitch not grumbly so there you go okay well uh this is going to serve as our regular podcast for the week because oh how's your butt uh, someday my butt won't hurt, but two days not that day. Right, but I do think it's updates. I think it's a little better because you've been resting. I have literally done nothing for seven days. This is good. We sat outside on the porch and ate dinner tonight, which is the thing we haven't been doing because it hurts me to sit and eat dinner. And I was fine That's for whatever the fifteen minutes. It took what are you doing in a week? 
Uh, no, in five days. Yes. This weekend, I'm running the New York City Marathon. Um, not so resting. Not it's it's sort of been good that I I mean there's nothing good about what happened. This with is me the that best jellyfish, taper but, you've ever had. Uh, yeah, I mean the enforced, basically like ten days of rest as a result of this jellyfish have certainly not caused any new problems. They've allowed a lot of stuff to heal up for me. I think it was a swarm of jellyfish. A Where school of bad. jellyfish, a pod. Bad. I don't know what a, a group of jellyfish is called. A sting of jellyfish? Hey Siri, what's the collective noun for jellyfish? A lash. Here's what I found from I walk cornwall. A swarm, a bloom, or a smack. A smack a is smack good. That's smack a, you, of you, you ran into a smack of jellyfish. Anyway, uh, I'm leaving on Friday and I'll be back on Monday. So we're not going to do a No Rules podcast over the weekend. Or we're not doing any podcast over the weekend because I'll be in New York City. New York City. <laughs> uh, so if you are so inclined, you can track me at the New York City Marathon app. I suspect people might be so inclined based on your Boston history. I'll be tweeting about it from Jen Runs With Dogs, my running account. So I'll be here with the dogs. Thank you for taking care of the dogs while I go do epic shit. Because New York is not a dog-friendly environment for our dogs. It is not. We've we've been in New York with Pine K uh, and oh other God. other permutations, and just like taking anyone out in the middle of the night in New York is grim. Mm-hmm. This is like one little tree that's surrounded by some Terrible. dirt. And the dog's like, "You really want me to pee right here?" Everyone's looking at me. That <laughs> sucks. It uh, it's not. I just have memories of cold and windy and and kind of dog unhappy. Yeah. Now we we know better. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, so good. And you're well rested. You're going to be I, super that strong. That I certainly am. You can be super strong. You'd be like, oh, this is it? This is all? I could run another 25 miles. I mean, usually that's what I'm like. Yep. Like 26, that's that's what I do on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> then Sunday I go do more. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah. Thanks everybody for listening to our rambles. We hope you enjoyed the no rules. And until next time. Don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yeah, don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Bye. Bye.